More and more people are choosing to get tattoos, but have you ever wondered how they actually work? Like what layer of the skin do they actually get deposited in and why does this make them permanent? You also have to consider that tattoo ink is technically a foreign substance. So we'll talk about how our immune system responds to this as well as some of the potential risks of getting a tattoo. And of course, we'll have a little discussion about how tattoo laser removal actually works. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so let's do this. So in order for us to understand how tattoos work, we first need to cover a few key features about the skin. So here we have a skin dissection from the mid back of a cadaver. And the first layer we're gonna talk about is just this top layer referred to as the epidermis. But if I show you the cut edge here, we're gonna actually see two layers here that make up the entirety of the skin. This deeper, thicker, and you can see lighter in color layer, that's actually the dermis, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But this darker, thinner, almost looks paper thin to the naked eye, that's the actual epidermis. And even though it looks paper thin to the naked eye, it can be over 50 cell layers thick in certain areas of the body. So if we were to zoom into the epidermis, we would see that it's made up of this tissue known as epithelial tissue, specifically stratified squamous epithelium. Now don't let that name stratified squamous epithelium throw you off too much. Stratified just means multiple cell layers thick, and squamous refers to flat because the cells that are on the very top of the epidermis have flattened out and died off. But what's also really cool about the epidermis is that the cells on the very bottom are mitotically active, or in other words, they're copying themselves. And so when a cell gets copied, it moves up, and then another cell will get copied and the cell that was here will move up and another one will move into its place. And this process will continue to happen until a cell can move from the very bottom all the way to the very top and will eventually flake off. And what I love to tell my students is that a lot of these cells flaking off can contribute to the dust of your house. So depositing tattoo ink into the epidermis wouldn't be a great strategy if you wanted that tattoo to be permanent. Because what we learned from the nature of the tissue that makes up the epidermis is those cells are constantly dividing and being turned over and eventually flaking off. And so if you want the tattoo to be permanent, we need to get it down to that next layer that we previously mentioned, the dermis. Now the dermis is made out of a completely different tissue than the epidermis. The dermis is made out of something called dense irregular connective tissue. And if we were to zoom into this dense irregular connective tissue that makes up the dermis, we would see much fewer cells. And these cells that are scattered about are called fibroblasts or fibrocytes and that's because they produce collagen fibers. So they're gonna produce these collagen fibers and deposit them into the spaces or this matrix between the cells. And it's called dense, irregular, dense because there's a ton of collagen fibers, irregular because the collagen fibers are scattered in all directions. And these collagen fibers and fibrocytes are important to our tattoo story because as the tattoo needle is depositing the ink, some of that ink is going to get suspended within those collagen fibers and some of it will actually get deposited within those fibrocytes. But what happens next is also very important for that tattoo remaining permanent. As the tattoo ink is being deposited into the dermis, we need to consider two things. One, the tattoo ink is technically a foreign substance. And two, as the needle is penetrating the skin from anywhere from 50 to 3,000 times per minute, this is creating some micro trauma. So the combination of these two things, foreign ink plus micro trauma, this will induce an inflammatory response. And one of the key steps in inflammation is vasodilation of the blood vessels in the area. And so this vasodilation allows for certain white blood cells to pass from the bloodstream and into the tissue to deal with what's ever going on. And the white blood cell that we're gonna focus on is a macrophage. Macrophages engulf foreign substances and even dead cellular debris. And this process is called phagocytosis. So let's say you had like a cut or an injury to the skin, these macrophages could engulf the dead cellular debris, the dead cellular components, even viruses and bacteria that made it in. And once they engulf these particles or these substances, they also have the ability to digest or break them down and sometimes even recycle certain components in certain cases. But with this larger foreign particle, this tattoo ink, yes, the macrophages can engulf it, but they can't break it down. And so because they can't break it down, the strategy is, well, let's just contain this ink in this area so it can't spread to other areas of the body. And this is this final step and helps us to understand how the white blood cells also contribute to the permanence of a tattoo. As many people know, yes, we say tattoos are permanent, but over time they can fade. So what's contributing to the fading of tattoos? But real quick, I wanna take a second to say thank you to the sponsor of today's video, AG1. AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that I've been drinking every day for years now. 
It's made with 75 high quality whole food source ingredients, including vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. AG1 maintains the highest quality of standards and is even NSF certified for sport, which means it's tested to ensure that what's on the label is actually found in the bottle. AG1 also supports gut health with its pre and probiotic blend. And I've shared this personal anecdote before and I might as well share it again, but my bowel movements seem to be a little bit more regular when I'm drinking AG1 as a part of my routine. And speaking of routines, AG1 is ridiculously easy to make. All you do is take one scoop, add eight ounces of water, shake it up, drink it down, and carry on with your day. And the more that you can streamline and simplify your health routine, the more likely you are to adhere to it. And getting so many high quality whole food source ingredients in one easy scoop certainly helps one to streamline their routine. So if you're interested, go to drinkag1.com slash human anatomy or scan the QR code and get a free welcome kit that includes the canister, shaker, vitamin D3 plus K2, and five AG1 travel packets. And as always, we will include that link and the information in the description below. So what causes tattoos to fade? Well, when someone first gets a tattoo, there can be some initial fading that takes place during the healing process as that ink is getting solidified or contained within that area of the skin. And you'll often hear the importance of aftercare when initially getting a tattoo. If someone were to get an infection during that healing process or they were to expose that area of the skin to UV light or even get sunburned, these things could negatively affect the appearance or the vibrance of that tattoo. But let's say someone does proper aftercare and they don't get an infection and they've got this awesome tattoo. Over time, if that tattoo is exposed to consistent UV light, the UV light could break down those ink particles and speed up the fading of that tattoo. But even those people who are great with their sunscreen, avoiding UV light, you'll still get some natural fading that occurs. So what's happening in that situation? Remember that we learned that the macrophages, these white blood cells, engulfed the tattoo ink and then contained it in that area of the skin. But it's not like these white blood cells live forever. They have a life cycle and they'll eventually undergo this process called apoptosis. And you might remember from like a biology class that apoptosis is typically referred to as this programmed cellular death. And as these cells, these white blood cells that contain the ink undergo the cellular death, they release the ink. But then a new macrophage is thought to have come and engulf that ink and then again contain it in that area. Kind of like this release, engulf, release, engulf cycle that occurs throughout the lifetime of the tattoo. What's thought to occur is that the tattoo ink, not all of it that gets released by the dying macrophage is engulfed by the new macrophage. Over time, the tattoo ink might start to break down into smaller particles and some of these smaller particles might get left behind, so to speak. And so then they can be carried away from that area of the skin into the lymphatic system. And we know this to occur because they have found tattoo ink in distant lymph nodes. But this carried away of small ink particles that don't fully get engulfed in the new macrophage is what explains and contributes to the fading of tattoos over time. So let's move on to the potential risks of getting a tattoo. And we'll pretty much put these in three different categories, infections, reactions, and the random ones. And you'll see why these are the random ones in just a second because some of them will probably surprise you. But let's start with the infections. You can get what's referred to as a localized infection. And this would be an infection in the area of the skin where the tattoo was placed. And the two most common causes of this are two types of bacteria, Staphylococcus aureus, we often refer to that as a staph infection, and even Streptococcus pyogenes, which is a type of strep infection. You also have the potential to get a systemic infection, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. HIV could even potentially be spread through getting a tattoo. I say potentially because there actually haven't been any documented cases of somebody getting HIV from a tattoo. There have been a few cases of people getting monkeypox from tattooing, but again, that's pretty rare as well and even something called infective endocarditis. This would be when bacteria get into the bloodstream, travel to the heart and infect the inside lining of the heart. Now again, I wanna be clear here, most people who go to reputable tattoo artists aren't coming down with these crazy infections. As I've kind of hinted to, monkeypox is rare, infective endocarditis is rare to get from a tattoo, and like I already mentioned, there's been no documented cases that I'm aware of of someone getting HIV from getting a tattoo. But the most important thing you can do to reduce your risk of like the hepatitis B, C, and those localized infections is, again, going to a reputable tattoo artist that is using good techniques to sterilize their equipment, isn't doing anything crazy like reusing needles and equipment that shouldn't be reused. And also, aftercare is extremely important, especially for those localized bacterial infections because the highest risk of getting one of those localized staph or strep infections is during that first 
three weeks after getting the tattoo. And again, just because I love to be a little bit of a broken record sometimes, reputable tattoo artist, and proper aftercare. Now on to the second risk category for getting a tattoo, and this was reactions. We are mostly referring to hypersensitivity, or what most people would think of as an allergic reaction. These are most often associated with metallic salts that can be found in tattoo pigments, such as mercury, chromium, cadmium, cobalt, and nickel to name a few. Red ink, for example, tends to be one of the more common pigments related to allergic reactions, as this pigment often contains the mercury that was just mentioned. But what is challenging about this is that not everyone knows that they have an allergy to certain tattoo ink ingredients until after they get the tattoo. And unfortunately, there are still tattoo ink sold in the United States that may contain ingredients that the manufacturer did not list on the label. So this again comes back to using a reputable tattoo artist that uses high quality products. And on to some of the more random risks of getting a tattoo. And I definitely want to preface this first one that it is very low risk, but I wanted to mention it because it was quite interesting. There are some people that have reported a burning sensation and even intense pain over tattooed areas of the skin that contained heavy deposits of metallic oxides or iron or even titanium when they got an MRI. MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging which is essentially a scanner that uses strong magnetic fields to generate images of the organs and structures within the human bodies for diagnostic purposes. And because of this, anything metallic could interact with the machine and cause a problem. And this is why they have a person remove anything that's metallic prior to getting an MRI. And some people can't even get an MRI if they have certain devices or metallic implants. So the idea is a tattoo with a higher than normal amount of metallic ingredients could potentially cause a problem. But again, this is very low risk. In one of the studies that I read, the probability of this occurring was less than 0.3%. And the other random risk, or kind of more of what I think of as a consideration or increasing your awareness, tattoos, depending on the size and color, could make it a little bit more difficult to detect certain skin conditions, like potential skin cancers like melanoma. So it would just be prudent to spend a little bit more time examining those areas with yourself, as well as discussing this with your medical provider or dermatologist, say like during your annual physical. And lastly, sometimes people feel differently about a tattoo as time goes on. Maybe you tattooed the name of that special someone on a certain body part, who unfortunately is no longer that special. And you may want to remove that tattoo from your body. Tattoos can be removed by lasers with a series of treatments. During the procedure, the tattoo inks and pigments selectively absorb the high intensity laser light while not destroying normal surrounding skin tissue. The laser causes the tattoo to dissolve into smaller ink particles that can eventually be more easily removed by the immune system. The cons of this is that it requires time with multiple treatments, it can be painful, and it obviously costs money. These treatments can definitely be effective for tattoo removal, but there is some potential risk of scarring and even skin discoloration that you would obviously want to discuss with the provider that would be performing the procedure. So hopefully you learned some cool new things about how tattoos work. And if you're interested in learning more about the skin, say like how skin pigment works and how even goosebumps work within your skin, we'll link both of those videos here. And thank you for supporting our channel. Let us know what you thought of this video in the comments below. And of course, we'll see you in the next video.